and welcome. I'm Melinda Akinwami. Tonight, history is made in Africa as the Obasanjo Presidential Library is commissioned in Ogun State Capital, Abel Kuta, in an occasion attended by prominent personalities from inside and outside the country. Massive turnout at the JS Taka Stadium in Boko for the coronation of the traditional ruler of Kiev ethnic group in Benue State. One person confirmed dead as a canal-bound train derails in Oshobo, the Oshun State capital. And former U.S. President Barack Obama denies phone tapping allegation by President Donald Trump. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria plans to compel banks to sell business and personal travel allowances to customers within 24 hours. On sports news tonight, Britain's Andy Murray ends title drought at Dubai Open, winning the tournament with a 6-3-6-2 victory over Fernando Vidasco. We we'll begin tonight with what will go down in history as the first of its kind in Africa is the commissioning of the Olushego Obasanjo Presidential Library, located in his hometown of Abelkuta, the Ogun State capital, southwest Nigeria. The acting president of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, and the president of Liberia, Mrs. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, extolled the virtues of Chief Obasanjo and underlined the benefits of preserving history with the existence of the library. On his part, the former president revealed the motivation behind the idea and expressed hope that the facility will live up to the vision as conceived. We'll bring you more details of that story as soon as we get them. But to other matters now, President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed confidence that Africa will witness more political stability, security and economic growth during the tenure of the new chairman of the African Union. The president, who is in London on medical vacation, said this when the AU chairperson and president of Guinea, Alpha Conde, called to wish him good health and speedy recovery. His special advisor on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adeshino, explained that President Conde made the call on behalf of AU leaders, assuring the Nigerian president that all African leaders stand with him in prayers. President Buhari thanked President Conde and congratulated him on his election as AU chairperson during the 28th Ordinary Summit of the Union in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. It is celebration galore in Benue State, North Central Nigeria, as a new monarch of Thief Kingdom, Professor James Atase, is coronated. The event brought together traditional rulers, indigents, prominent personalities, and guests from other parts of the country. Governor Samuel Othom asked the paramount ruler to work with the people and ensure that peace is restored to the state. A cultural display to set the tone for the day's event. It's the coronation of Professor James Ayase as the fifth tortive and paramount ruler of the Tiv ethnic group. His Majesty Otiri, Professor James Otise Ayase. The JS Tarka Stadium in Boko, Benue State, is filled to capacity. His beautiful wife, right by his side, they are paying homage. Dignitaries present include Senate President Bukola Saraki, Speaker of the House of Representatives Yakubu Dogara, former Vice President of Nigeria Atiku Abubaka, Indo State Governor Roger Sokoracha, and Host Governor Samuel Otom. I will be impartial to all, be father to all chief sons and daughters, irrespective of their political, religious, and state of indigenship under my jurisdiction. So help me God. After taking the oath of office, the state governor presents the Tortiv with the staff of office. I present this staff of office as a symbol of authority over the Tiv kingdom. 
May you rule with the fear of God. Congratulations. By this Go announcement, now. it means that Professor Governor, to ask the residents to ensure peace reigns in the state. Let us learn to live working with the rule of law and due process. Two wrongs will not make a right. Where there are breaches or trespasses, let them be reported to law enforcement agencies. We have set up committees at the state level, at the local government level, at the world and kindred level. And we at the state with the security apparatus of the state, we are willing to support all forms of trespasses and breaches. And we'll give you comfort when you come to us. For the directive, his tenure will witness an open door policy. I pledge that the Chief Area Council under my leadership shall provide a platform and enlist all three sons and daughters to participate actively in our efforts to restore, reduce, and restructure the chief nation. I elect to provide leadership that will establish the institutional objectives and reforms that are necessary for the transformation, conscious of the unfolding challenges associated with it. And with this new leadership for the Tiff people, they can look forward to a new era of development for the Tiff kingdom. Still talking about Benue State, it has been described as the food basket of Nigeria, but much of the produce from there and other parts of the country are left to waste every year. The need for the development of a storage and processing facility is what many farmers are asking for, but the state government believes only the private sector can save the day. Our correspondent, Inni Thompson, has this report. Nigeria's population growth rate, as recorded by the United Nations, has grown from 2.5% in year 2000 to 2.65% in 2015. On the other hand, production of food crops such as rice, wheat, maize and soya beans have recorded minimal increase and even decreased between 2013 and 2014. One of the consequences of this imbalance is the pronouncement by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations that except adequate and timely responses put in place between June and August 2017, there would be 11 million food insecure people, especially in the northern part of the country. This contrasts with the picture of Zakibiam Yam Market in Benue State. About 150 trucks of yam leave Zakibia market in Benue State to other parts of the country every week. Arguably, that makes this market the biggest yam market in West Africa. Close observation of the market shows that more can be achieved from here. We are appealing to government that government should uh, <laughs> help us bring the industries that will make this yam into yam floor. Because all these yams we are producing are selling within the country locally. And I believe by the time they will be producing it, turning it into flour, and the federal government will be exporting it, I believe that it will be better than what we are having now. The governor, Samuel Lotom, who is also a farmer, admits that there's been the need to re-strategize in the area of processing food crops. I'm not sure government wants to go into processing or into any commercial venture. We're not interested. We are interested in providing social services, trying to support the private sector and individuals on how they can improve on their business. Where there is need to relax any policy uh, to ensure that our people succeed, we will do that because we are better for it. With the record that about 50% of Nigeria's food production is wasted, obviously storage and processing should form part of the agricultural development plan of the country. Ini Thompson reporting for Channel Television News. As part of efforts to win the war against terrorism and other related crimes across the country, the Nigerian Air Force has trained 30 pilots to operate the recently acquired Super Musak aircraft. 
At the graduation ceremony of the first set of pilots held at the Air Force Base in Kaduna State, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, explained that the addition of the aircraft is part of measures to reposition the Nigerian Air Force. These Nigerian pilots have been trained by their Pakistan counterparts on how to operate these aircrafts as well as its maintenance. The graduation ceremony marks the final takeover of the aircraft as Nigerian pilots can now fly and train other student pilots. The Air Officer Commanding of the Training Command, Air Vice Marshal Christopher Okoye, believes that the successful conversion of these pilots will enhance pilot training, which will in turn impact positively on operational effectiveness of the Nigerian Air Force, especially in its fight against insurgency and other criminality within the country. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, who presented certificates to the graduating instructor pilots, says that training has remained a major means of transforming and repositioning the service over the years. Training is very important in development of air power. You have to have the right skills, you have to write, uh, have the right training if you are to be effective. So it is very, very important. It has a way of impacting and it's even more important now because we are reactivating airplanes with the support of the federal government. We are also inducting new airplanes with the support of the federal government. And who are those that are going to fly those airplanes? We have to train pilots. And that is why it's very significant what we are doing, not only in the Northeast, but everywhere in the country. The Nigerian Air Force inducted the Super Mushak aircraft into its inventory in December 2016 to address the challenge of training pilots. And still on security matters, the Bochi State Police Command has rescued 20 people, including 12 women, from their abductors from a forest in Darazo local government area of the state. The Commissioner of Police, Bochi State Command, Zaki Ahmed, confirmed the arrest while parading over 130 suspects. In Ondo State, 28 individuals have also been arraigned at the Magistrate Court in Akure, the state capital. Police authorities in Bochi State, Northeast Nigeria, believe that the partnership with residents is one that works. Bochi Police boss Zaki Ahmed attributed command's achievement to the cooperation from members of the public and the synergy with other security agencies. In recent months, different operational methods led to the arrest of people suspected to be involved in kidnapping and other crimes. We are conducting a lot of surveillance and uh, all the suspected areas are being raided and we are putting them on serious surveillance. If there is uh, anybody uh, being suspected, I think uh, because of the synergy we have the members of the public, they will definitely let us know. We have been informing them, we have been sensitizing them that uh, if there is uh, any suspicious person uh, seen, they should let us know. Some of the suspects have been charged to court while others are under investigation. Southwest, the police in Ondo State arranged 28 people at the magistrate court in the state capital for illegal possession of dangerous weapons. A public relations officer of the police command, Femi Joseph, says after a tip off from some individuals, only 28 of a group of 70 gang members were apprehended while others escaped. The suspects could not give satisfactory answers on how they got the weapons. We are charging them for one conspiracy, unlawful assembly. Uh, we are also charging them for unlawful uh, possession of firearms. So they, it, it behoves them to, uh, to talk to the law. 
on why they should possess those firearms and dangerous weapons. The men were rounded up during a meeting with one of the leaders of the Road Transport Union who insists that they are not criminals. He also says the weapons were not found in his house but in a vehicle parked outside. The, the gun was found in a vehicle parked in my house, not in my uh, personal house. The police is still searching for those who escaped while those in custody will be charged for conspiracy, unlawful assembly as well as unlawful possession of firearms. In part two after the break, human rights lawyer Femi Falano says the arrest and parade of personnel of the Peace Corps of Nigeria by the police is illegal. Join us again.